It was an iconic image from October 7th, in some ways one of the most chilling and bizarre pictures from that terrible day. As I describe it, I'm sure you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll be able to see it in your mind's eye. It's a photo of Yafa Adar, age 85, being kidnapped from kibbutz near Oz. She's wrapped in a blanket, sitting in the front passenger seat of what's actually called a mobility cart, but it looks like an electric golf cart. And in kibbutzim, a lot of the older members use them to get around. And her expression in the photo is extraordinary. She doesn't seem to be frightened, not even a little bit. She doesn't look agitated or excited. She seems almost peaceful. If you photoshopped the terrorists holding machine guns out of the photo, she could be on a golf course with friends. But of course, she's not with friends. She's with brutal murderers and rapists, vile terrorists, who prior to kidnapping her, undoubtedly perpetrated awful, horrific crimes against humanity, actions which are, like kidnapping non-combatants, actual war crimes. But in that photo, there's Yafa Adar with what almost looks like a beatific smile on her face. And this morning, at about 8 a.m. our time, Yafa was at last, after 50 days of captivity, returned to her family, which includes us. All Jews everywhere are members of her extended mishpacha, and we are all grateful for her release. We will learn in the days and months to come more about what she and others who were released endured. It is shameful and indefensible and horrific that any human being would ever have to experience what these hostages have been through, much less an 85-year-old great-grandmother. Who is Yafa Adar? She was a founding member of Kibbutz near Oz, which is one of the communities that was devastated by the October 7th massacre. A mother of three children, grandmother to eight, great-grandmother to seven. One Israeli journalist described Yaffa as an icon of dignity and quiet defiance. One who knows how to keep a stiff upper lip even as ecstatic terrorists who had just perpetrated a massacre in her kibbutz on October 7th, drove her off into captivity in a mobility scooter and later by car to Gaza. Another wrote that Yaffa is the embodiment of Zionism and Israeli resilience, the kind of person who would never, ever let a Hamasnik see her break. We will learn more in the days to come about her ordeal, but thank God this Shabbat she is back with her family. Sadly, not in her home of near Oz, which will need to be almost entirely rebuilt, but with family nonetheless. She's safe and sound, thank God. We are still awaiting the return of one of her grandchildren, Tamir Adar, who is on the sheet that you might have picked up on your way in. He was kidnapped on that same day, and he is still held in captivity. We hope that he is alive. I'm grateful for the return of the other 12 hostages this morning and eagerly looking forward to bringing ever la every last one of the Chatufim, the kidnapped, home. Another face that touches my heart, especially this Shabbat, is Ohad Munder Zichri, and you can see him on the front side of the page, right next to Yafa Adar. You probably saw his images many times over the last seven weeks as well. He's the boy who had to experience his ninth birthday in Hamas captivity, down in the bowels of hell, in an underground multi-billion dollar complex that Hamas built for this very purpose. Ohad and his mother, Karen, were visiting kibbutz near Oz for the holiday of Simchat Torah to be with his grandparents, Karen's mother and father, 
Ruth, and Avraham. Ohad's father, Avi, was back home in Kfar Saba when the attack happened. And he has been, as you can imagine, worried sick about his son and about Karen ever since they were kidnapped. And on Ohad's birthday about a month ago, Avi told a reporter, quote, I keep imagining what he's going through. He's a sensitive boy. Did he see dead bodies? He wears glasses. Did they take them from him? Can he see anything at all? I keep thinking of every scenario, hoping for, the, hoping for the least catastrophic. I just hope that he's safe and with his mother. Ohad's father and mother had him later in life. Avi is now 69 years old, and Karen is 54. And she is clearly what we call in Hebrew a tzadeket, a righteous person. She's a special education teacher and a volleyball coach for children with disabilities. Can you imagine the way his family worried for him, little Ohad? I've never met him, but he's been on my mind so often these past few months. I can close my eyes and see that photo. I can see that smile. How must it have been for his father if that's the way we felt? How must it have been for his friends who worried so much about him? Avi told one of the reporters who interviewed him that he had a very hard time sleeping over these last 50 days, which we can relate to as well. He was so worried about Ohad, about Karen, about Ruth and Avraham. He said that thoughts of his son never left him and that his only reprieve came when he would take sleeping pills at night so he could get a little shut-eye. And then, Avi said, I would wake up in the morning and feel guilty for not thinking about them in my sleep. Today, Ohad was released with his mother, Karen, and his grandmother, Ruth. Ruth and Ohad's grandfather, Avraham, were residents of near Oz, and Ohad's grandfather, 78 years old, is thought to be alive and still in Hamas captivity. But sadly, Ohad's uncle, Roi, who was very close to him, was murdered on October 7th. So he's not here physically to welcome the family home. When Ohad celebrated his birthday, which coincidentally is the same as my mother's, October 23rd, you might have seen some of the videos that were shown on social media and other places. It was featured on the Today Show and CBS News. People had birthday parties for him all over the Jewish world. And there's one beautiful video where they interviewed Ohad's friends and they asked them about their friend and it was so sweet. And one of the things they said is that he's good at soccer and he's a great friend and he's so good hearted and he's really good at Rubik's Cube. There are 220 or so still in captivity. And I just told you two stories and very incomplete. And we'll keep praying for them until, God willing, every last one of them comes home. During this difficult time, I find comfort in a few things, one of which is this community, being together, knowing that there are other congregations all over the Jewish world who are telling similar stories, that there are Jews all over the world who feel a deep sense of connection, knowing that there are non-Jewish friends and allies who are there for us as well. And then there's our tradition, knowing that there are teachings from over 3,000 years that remind us that we are not the first generation, sadly, tragically. I wish we were. I wish we didn't have that wisdom. But we are not the first generation to experience these horrors. And there's one verse that recently has been coming back again and again, a few verses actually, from Psalm 23. Gam ki elech begeit salmavet, and even if I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, lo ira ra ki ata imadi, I will not fear evil, for you, God, are with me. And I can close my eyes and see them walking in the darkness through the valley of the shadow. And it's interesting, the verse says, 
Lo ira ra, I will not fear evil, but it's often translated as I will not fear harm, which is a possible translation, but I, I want to... I want to stay with the I will not fear evil because harm we know is unavoidable sometimes in life, especially when there really are people who seek your harm. But evil is something different. When I say I fear no evil, I think about Yafa Adar sitting on that golf cart with that unbelievable expression on her face. She knows exactly what's going on. She's well aware of what fate might be in store for her. She knows that she's probably going to be taken into the darkness, into the shadow of those tunnels. And while she was there, I'm sure she suffered. You can see in the photo from her release, it looks like she lost 15 pounds in captivity. And we know that her family and her friends, they worried and they lost sleep, so there was harm. But we will fear no evil. To me, this suggests that our belief in what is good and what is right, our determination to hold on to our values no matter what, this is what we will not fear. We will stay true to our belief that in the course of time, good shall triumph over evil. The wicked will be held to account. And though it might take years, maybe centuries, maybe millennia, we surely won't be here to see it, but we hold on to the belief that someday God will, as the next verse says, ta'aroch lefanenu shulchan neged tzorarenu. God will spread a table in full view of our enemies, and God will anoint our heads with oil, and then it says, kosi rivaya, and our cups will overflow with goodness. And we shall be pursued, not by demons who wish us harm, but we shall be pursued by goodness and steadfast love. And someday, all of us, every last one of us, shall come home to dwell in the house of the eternal for many, many long days. Kenya Hiratzon, may this be God's will for us and for all Israel. We composed a special setting of a prayer for the captives, thanks to Cantor and thanks to Dr. Tali Tadmore. And I'm going to invite you to, if you want to be inspired with some of the names, and our thought was that every week, we would try to call, call out the names of another minion of captives until we don't ever have to do it again, God willing. But in the meantime, we'll say some of those names. We'll give thanks for the ones who have gone free, but we'll keep thinking of those who have been left behind. And we will remind ourselves and we will remind them that we are here with them and for them. Achenu Tamir Adar Achotenu Our sisters Achotenu Elma Avraham Achenu Our brothers Achenu Emma Cunio Achotenu Sisters, Achotenu, Tal Chaimini.
Ahotenu Romi Konen Hamakom Shechina Bekor Harachami Rachem Na Rechamina Aleh Liga 